It's the Larry O'Connor Show, AM 790 KBC. We do have some breaking news here. Uh, President Trump has now ordered the grounding of the 737 Boeing MAX airplanes. Uh, we discussed this earlier in the program with a uh, advocate on behalf of uh, airline passengers, Mary Schiavo. She's a former transportation director, inspector general. We got into the details of that with her. And the president of the United States has now ordered an immediate grounding. Uh, you can get that podcast, by the way, and hear that interview if you missed it earlier in the program uh, and all of our podcasts at KABC.com. So do that, will you? Uh, right now, oh, I want to remind you to keep your eyes out today. This is so cool. The KBC promo van looks very cool. I, I look beautiful on the KBC promo van. Why? It's got pictures of all of us. I'm right there between Jillian and Dr. Drew. Very nice placement. I've got a good agent. Keep your eyes out today for the new KBC promo van. It's going to be at the Starbucks in the city of Orange. Starting at 2 p.m., they're going to be hanging out. Now, you know, that's just not enough to say the Starbucks in the city of Orange. That's got to narrow it down to about, what, 700 Starbucks? Starting at 2 p.m., they're going to be hanging out in the parking lot outside the Starbucks located just off the Costa Mesa Freeway on the corner of North Tustin and Meats Avenue. Now, that's specific. That's Starbucks on the corner of Tustin and Meats. Grab some swag. And the first three listeners are going to uh, show up here are going to win a pair of tickets to the Fab Four in concert on Friday, April 12th at the City National Grove of Anaheim. For more info, go to kbc.com. See you today in the beautiful city of Orange. Joining us now is Pete Earl. He's an economist at the American Institute for Economic Research. And, Pete, thanks for joining us because we've seen these stories coming out of New York City about the uh, major financial crisis they're facing. And, boy, it sure looks a lot like what's going on here in Los Angeles as well. Am I wrong? No, thanks, Larry. It's great to be here. Um, no, all of these things are, are, are all of the factors facing New York are factors facing L.A. and a large number of other cities and municipalities around the country. Um, there's a, a number of prevailing themes, and they tend to be, uh, you know, large public employee budgets, pension obligations, run amok, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And so first, if you can give me a little bit of insight here on what's going on in New York um, and then and then let's have the mirror uh, in terms of what's happening here in Los Angeles. And what is New York yeah. facing right now? Is it mostly these public employee unions, pensions, and benefits that are dragging them down? Yeah, uh, it's, 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 uh, there's a number of factors, but really what it is is it has to do with um, increasingly underfunded uh, pension funds. And for anybody who's not familiar with the term, underfunding basically means the gap between the assets that are actually in the pension fund and what it needs to have to meet its obligations. Yeah. So nationwide, uh, pension funds tend to have about 72 percent. Um, in New York City, that number is 62 percent, which means that uh, – and, and when you ask the New York City pension fund, in, in its reports, it says it's underfunded by about $65 billion. But there are outside estimates that say that the actual number is more than twice that, something like $140 billion. And even with that, And even with that being the case, Mayor de Blasio is adding $3 billion to the budget next year, and New York City is adding 33000 more pension-eligible government jobs. It's absolutely unsustainable. Yeah, and, and I got to – can I just ask, because I hear this all the time, and I know that's a problem sure. in the state of California, let alone the city of Los Angeles. I used to sit on uh, Taft-Hartley uh, health plans. I was I, the local 33 for IATSE here in Southern California and mm-hmm. AFFM, local 47 musicians union. I was a trustee, and we had to deal with the laws. There are Taft-Hartley laws that uh, govern these pension plans. plans govern that You're not allowed to let it go underfunded at this level. Why do government union benefit plans, why are they allowed to go and, and, and reach these limits of underfunding? Well, I mean, there I, I could give you historical reasons, or I could give you some some more like political drivers. Yeah, I, I'm guessing but, it's the uh, political uh, aspect. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what it really comes down to, Larry, is incentives. I mean, and, and incentives where uh, political figures are involved, and uh, they are they clearly fall within the realm of perverse incentives. For example, I mean, a couple of them are you know with short terms in office, two, four, six years, whatever it is, at various levels. It's rational and, and provides inspiration to do as many political favors, initiate as many programs, and generally spend as much as possible while still in office. Yeah, and and I and and who's who's going to spend those few years they have in office cutting programs and setting spending limits? Right, especially when these unions are so instrumental in raising money and getting out the vote and electioneering for these guys. It's one party rule, and they get into office and they go ahead and negotiate contracts. With the people that just put them in office, we yep, know how it's going to happen. That's exactly it. Yeah. And you know, the other two other two other things are that, as as over years and generations, the can has been kicked further and further down the road. It really started uh, for most pension funds. The uh, expenses began to outstrip revenue in the 60s and 70s. 
what's happened is these pension funds and uh, gen- generally city city finances in general general have been more and more um, focused upon medium and long term debt, and all that does is send the bill ahead to children and grandchildren. Yeah, I remember when John Morlock was just a private citizen down in Orange County, and he was raising the red flag about potential bankruptcy of Orange County having to do with that had a lot to do with the shaky investments that they were making that the Comptroller was making, but it also oh, had yeah. to do with these liabilities, and he was right. Uh, is there anyone sounding the alarm, Peter Earl, here in uh, Los Angeles? Is Eric Garcetti just whistling past the graveyard on this? I'm not familiar uh, with him specifically, but at any given time, there's usually a, a, a small voice uh, in the wilderness. Um, we have him in New York, uh, certainly in Los Angeles, in Illinois, which also has a lot of problems. There are generally, it's, it's usually something that's a political football. It's raised by the party that's sort of that's out of pay, favor and out of office. And when they get in, you know, then they sort of change their tune. Yeah. Um, it's it's um, it's it's the type of thing where. There's really no incentive to fix it because there's absolutely no skin in the game. When uh, when municipalities, when cities go bankrupt, in the rare occasion that a politician, whether it's a pension fund administrator or a mayor or someone else, is fired, that I mean that's rare, and it's almost, it almost never happens that they lose their house, lose their lose their car, their kids don't go to college, etc. But that often happens to people who are on the on the business end of those uh, policy decisions. All right. And so what, what how what's the timeline for the city of New York right now and and is Mayor de Blasio or any of the officials actually putting into place any sort of uh, fixes here or or is it just No. Gonna, so and, no, and they're, 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 what, what based on your uh, the tables or if you're doing an actuarial analysis of this what, at what point do they run out of money? So I haven't done that exactly, but I do know that um, in many cases, uh, these numbers are, are, are starting to spiral at such a rate that we could see you know, substantial changes to how the city will have to be financed within, say, 10 years. And um, the, the other thing is that you know, uh, we, we're, we're seeing now um, that the Federal Reserve has stopped raising rates because they think that we might be receiving headwinds, whether it's slowdown in China or some other factors. And in almost every case where there's been a municipal bankruptcy or a, uh, a Chapter 9 filing, it was usually that the finances were sort of teetering on the brink and then something external happened, whether it was the financial pa- uh, um, crisis in 2008, whether in the case of Atlantic City, it was Hurricane Sandy. So, um, you know, mm. conceivably, if we face a recession, um, you know, uh, um, you know, natural disaster, earthquake or something, yeah. uh, anything like that could certainly expedite the sort of uh, inevitable crack up that these uh, really precarious finances uh, um, are opposing us with. Well, like New York and like Chicago, Los Angeles is basically a one party town. And uh, so if you're if we're counting on the opposition party to raise this as an issue and try to bring awareness to the problem. And there are not going to be many people listening, sadly, because uh, the Republicans don't really have a voice in this town. So I guess we're going to have to do it, Pete Earl. Uh, we meaning KBC. I don't know what your party affiliation is. You're just a numbers guy. <laughs> I appreciate you joining us on this, though. It is a major problem, and we're watching New York, and we're certainly watching Los Angeles. Thanks, Pete. Larry, thanks for having me. That's Pete Earl. He's an economist at the American Institute for Economic Research, and this is a very real problem. No one's talking about it here in Los Angeles. Uh, we've seen it in so many places. And by the way, it's a problem in Sacramento as well. Uh, you, we're going to have to get our friend John Morlock on, who was the voice in the wilderness down in Orange County when that county was facing bankruptcy. And of course, we remember they did have to go through a bankruptcy proceeding. I know that Morlock is concerned about Cal- uh, Sacramento, and uh, we are very concerned about Los Angeles as well. No one. No one is watching the money. No one is watching these unfunded liabilities for the public employee unions and the benefits that we are obligated to pay them. And by the way, the one thing they will do is sit at the negotiating table and extend those benefits for as far as the eye can see, even though there's no money, no real money to pay those off. You're going to be left holding the bag, L.A. But we'll do our best to bring attention to it here on The Larry O'Connor Show. On The Larry O'Connor Show.